Hello everyone, I'm Tony Richardson with ToddExpert.com. Today I'm going to show you how to create these stunning 3D text effects, but without using any 3D methods. We're only going to use 2D methods. Now, I'm in Photoshop CS6, and there is an entire 3D menu and an entire 3D platform that you can use to create this, but we're not going to need it today. So I'm going to show you how I did this, and we're going to first start with a new document. Now, if you don't have Photoshop or you have a previous version, you'll be able to follow along with no problems. Now, if you don't have Photoshop, uh, you can download GIMP. And GIMP is a free software that is very similar to Photoshop, eerily similar. And everything that I'm showing you today will convert very easily. You should have no problems at all. Now we're going to increase our navigation here. I want to make sure I'm seeing it at 100%. My background layer is locked naturally, uh, so I'm going to double click on it and choose BG to rename it. Now it's defaulted as white, so I want to get a gradient from light gray to dark gray. So that's going to be where the path of the light comes in from the top left and goes down to the bottom right. So. We're going to drag a gradient across here so it's lighter up here, darker here. Now we can put our text in. Now I always go with a grayish background or um, you know desaturated. I use grayscale backgrounds because if I want to color them, the information that I've created in this background will transfer to any color. In other words, it'll use it like an alpha channel. Um, we're going to call this, well, I'm not going to call it. We're going to type in TUD Expert. Okay, TUD Expert. We'll just use that for now and I'll center it or ballpark it. It doesn't have to be perfect because I can crop it later. And I'm going to duplicate this layer and move it down, double click on it. We're gonna name it to shadow. Um, however, one thing we need to do is this needs to be rasterized. So I'm gonna right click and choose rasterize type. Now if you're not sure what that means, just go to tutexpert.com, go to the articles, and there is a section there that talks about rasterized images versus vector images. And there is a difference, so uh, you can um, follow along uh, just by reading that article. You'll be able to kind of see the differences and hopefully apply them to your projects. Now, I just uh, pressed Control or Command and clicked on this layer to choose it. Then I will go to Edit, Fill, and I'm going to choose black, click OK. Now, the reason why you didn't see anything is because this top layer is still on. So if I shut it off, you can see that it is underneath. I'm going to use my arrow keys. The move tool is selected, so I'm going to arrow down once and over once. I'm going to duplicate by dragging it down to the new layer icon, and I'm going to arrow down once and over once. So I'm going to do this a couple times. So just bear with me. Arrow once, over once. All right down and over and down and over and let me do it what down and over maybe two more times down and over that's why I like working at a hundred percent so I can see what I'm really creating and down and over okay now the top layer is selected I'm going to hold shift click on the bottom layer and right click and merge them so merge layers that's also control or command E now one thing is we have these kind of voids here it's a little gray it's where everything overlapped we're going to hold control or command and click so that we've selected that layer while that layer is still selected we're going to go to edit fill and we're going to fill it with black click OK and that took care of that so now looks pretty good we'll zoom out take a peek We'll go to 100% here, and we're looking pretty good. Now, I want that text to kind of have that shadow effect that I was talking about. So we're going to go to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. Now, we're going to choose 45 degrees, except negative 45, because 45 is this way. So we're going to choose negative 45 degrees, and this may be called something else, maybe directional blur or something like that, but the concept is you want to go from the top left to the bottom right. I think 22 is way too much, so let's go with uh, 17, maybe 18. 18 is pretty good. All right, we'll click OK, 
I'll zoom in. I do need to erase the tops of this. So we'll grab the eraser tool. Um, I will increase my radius a bit. Now, here's a little trick if you're not sure how to do this. If you click one time, oh, well, back out of that, make sure that I'm on the shadow layer. If you click and hold shift and move your brush over and click again, it will erase everything in that path. So that's a little trick there. So we're going to click, hold shift, go over here and line it up and click again and there we did so now I do have the edges feathered so I have the hardness down to zero if you go up here it's size 15 hardness zero so that way um, if I hit anything else it'll it won't be as noticeable it doesn't have such a, a hard edge so I need to kind of go through and erase some of this I didn't do this on the original image but I think this one will stand out and be quite a bit more stunning um, but if the light is coming in from these sources the the top left um, it's obviously not going to uh, illum it's not going to cast a shadow on these uh, left sides of these uh, text so let me go through here and get this correct it's only going to be on the right side so that's one thing we're going to have to clear up here. Um, now, like, for instance, this X here, it's going to have a little bit uh, coming over to the P because it's it's cast a shadow, but the P itself won't have one on the left side, so we need to erase some of that. Um, and like this E over here, that definitely is not going to have anything. The T, the U, I think I've got. T, U, T. All right, got the E pretty pretty good. Uh, X, not bad. The P, it's not bad. This E, definitely not going to have anything here. So we're going to just kind of trim that off a bit. And just to make it look a little better, we'll trim that a bit. Let me undo that. Control Command Z and does those the last thing you did. I'll move this again. Grab that R a little bit. Grab a little bit of this T. Uh, We'll miss the spot and let's see we'll grab this all right am i missing anything a little bit of this r maybe right there i think we got just about everything um you know if you're doing this for a client you definitely want to spend a little more time than just running right through it uh, this x looks like i missed a little bit right there so like i said if uh, you're getting paid to do this and you have a client you want to spend a good amount of time fair amount of time making sure this is correct but we'll leave this for now you get the point and now what am i going to do oh i moved my background so we need to make sure my background i'm gonna hold shift and when i get to the edge it'll kind of snap in place all right what else do we need to do oh i know well if i've got uh, the light coming in from the top the text will have a little bit lighter left side than it does on the bottom right side. So we're going to go to the text again. We'll duplicate the layer. All right. We'll click on it. Actually, we'll rasterize it and we'll delete what's there. So right now, if I clicked, there's no pixels there. So I'm going to click on the text itself. I'm choosing this copy layer, which I'm going to rename as my text gradient. And I'm just going to create an effect here where I'm going to go, um, I'm going to use the transparency, so color to nothing. And the color I'm going to choose will be kind of a grayish blue. So we want that to be at this section and transparency over here. So I need to reverse this. So it needs to be transparent to the gray. So we're going to go from the top right to the bottom left. And that's about right. So over here, uh, we're going to try one more time. That's pretty close. Let's try it again. There we go. So if you notice over here, it's kind of transparent and it gets darker as it goes. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. All right. Now. I need to do something else. I need to create, if the light's coming in, I need to create a light source where it gets what I call hot spots. So we're going to duplicate the text layer one more time. I'll put it up here. I'll double click. I'll call it highlight, highlights. And I will rasterize this. Right click, rasterize. 
Okay, I will control click. Now we're going to edit, fill, and we're going to fill it with white. 100% white. There we go. Now I'm going to right click. Nope. I'm sorry. I'm going to select and transform selection. Now it's put a boundary box around there. So now I can move it. And I'm going to move it one pixel down and one pixel over. And with that, I did that with the arrow key and I'm going to click OK. And what I've done now is if you zoom in, I've selected the area one down and one over. So uh, if I delete what I'm selecting, it'll only leave this area. Let me just delete it and show you. So it's only leaving that highlight that I was talking about. So if I zoom out, you'll see the highlight. If I turn it off, turn it back on, so the light is coming in from the top left, that's what we're going to see. So we're getting closer. Now I'm going to create the light bands. So we're going to create a new layer. We'll double click and call this light bands. And I'm going to grab my selection tool and just draw out something about like that. We'll go edit, fill, white, and there we go. Now I'm going to right click, transform selection. I'm going to hold shift and that will constrain it. So left, right, I won't get off the page here. Um, somewhere about right there, about like that. And I'm going to make the band a little wider and we're going to click OK and edit, fill, white again. We're going to right click, transform selection. I'm going to hold shift and because that band is wider the space between them will make them a bit wider too and then I'll make this band even wider we'll click OK edit fill white now uh, we will transform selection again and I'll drop it down I'll make this band a little bit further apart and make it much wider we'll click OK edit fill why? And the reason I did this because I know that I'm going to skew it. So I want these bands here. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to transform by going to perspective. I'm going to pull these in and pull these out. So the reason is because I want the, I'm going to rotate this to where it's coming in from the top left. And it kind of, when light comes from a particular source, as it goes out, the wavelengths get wider and larger, taller. So it's going to create a bigger light pattern than it did from its originating source. So we're going to click OK. Um, you can do Control T to transform or Command T, rotate. And we're going to pull this just a little past and a little past here. And we want that at a 45. So let's kind of see if that's matching. It's pretty close. OK, that's not bad. And one little trick, if you hold Control or Command, you can kind of pull these points out a little bit more and pull these in a bit more. So that's a little trick there. And click OK. All right. Now, um, one thing we're going to want to do is set this to overlay. That's not bad, but it's a little harsh. So let's go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And let's ramp that up. Let's see, let's bring it down a bit. Let's see what six looks like, a little, little less. Let's go about eight, 8.5, I think will be nice. Looks like real light. Okay, we're gonna drop the opacity down to about 55. Oh boy, this is looking sharp. Okay, one thing though we need to do is it, where the light is missing, it certainly isn't going to highlight this text where the light's missing. So I'm going to control click there and then I'm going to go to the highlight layer and I'm going to need to delete this. But um, the way I'd rather do it, if I delete it, it's going to make a nice hard edge. I think I need to use the mask. If I use a mask tool, basically what it's going to do is fill the whole layer with black everywhere I've selected. So it's going to say, I mean, everywhere I haven't selected. So it's going to say you can't see that. Watch, I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to click and see, there's a nice soft gradient from light to nothing. So let me zoom out and show you with the highlights off. See, the highlights are only where the light's passing because of this mask right here. So if you're not sure about masks, just go search on Google. I'll do a tutorial on it one day. Uh, but uh, just search on Google and you can see how that works. It's really a cool effect. 
Now, one thing I'm going to want to go this background layer, create a new layer above it, and we'll call it BG Color. Uh, if I can type today, color. Okay, let's go. We'll grab this blue. It's desaturated. I like to put a little uh, more saturation in there. We'll click OK. We'll go to our paint bucket. We'll drop it in there. Let's choose a blending layer mode of color, and then we'll drop the opacity down a bit. Maybe something like 50, well, maybe 40, 45. Let's try that. That looks pretty good. So it gives a little pop, but not too much. Um, I think one thing we're going to want to do, we'll go and create a new layer. On this, we'll call it the Light Render, because I'm going to fill this. We're going to edit fill with white. All right, so that whole layer is filled with white. Then we're going to go to Filter, Render, and lighting effects. This will really sell the whole thing. Now, I've got it preset in here as a spotlight. So it's coming in from the top left, fading out to the bottom right. And I've chosen spotlight. The color intensity is about 25, although it's white. And then uh, if you notice, this is all based on the move. So none of these um, settings, I, I didn't mess with any of them. If you notice, there's 000, zero, zero other than the hot spots 44, which is right here. I did want that reasonably intense, which is about half. We'll click OK, and if you notice, um, you can't see anything. So we have to choose Overlay. And there you go. That really sells the effects. Now we'll drop it down to probably about 70 or so. And that's it. That's, that's it. We could go to Color, maybe drop that down just a smidgen. Pull some of that heat out of it. Um, yeah, that's about it. All right. I think the only other thing we could do is crop it just to really uh you know accent that that uh text in there so we'll do that click ok and there you have it wow what a beautiful let's go ahead and zoom in and look at it a hundred percent yeah that's just beautiful that looks really really sharp if you're on the site make sure you check out a few articles or watch another video and if you're on youtube make sure you subscribe